Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God, all praises to the Most High. So the teaching and the lesson today is the widow and the fatherless. And um, this whole week, God had me learning about, through the scriptures, about the widow and the fatherless. And then he told me that a judgment has gone out on people who oppress, hurt, harm the widow and the fatherless. And like break his commandments concerning the widow and the fatherless and the orphan all right so there's people who are widows out here and there's children who are fatherless out here and there is definitely a judgment because god is the father of the fatherless and he's the judge of the widows so what he gave me clarity and understanding of was that he laid for a judgment on this uh, okay and um so we're going to talk about the widow and the fatherless, and we're going to also go into the wickedness that is fashioned against the widow and the fatherless, what is being judged. So let's get into it. Psalm 68 and 5. A father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. So we know God is the father of the fatherless, and he's the judge of the widows, so he judges their cause. So Exodus twenty two twenty two, you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. People are not supposed to afflict a widowed woman, a widow, a widower can be a man or a woman. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. You know, if someone doesn't have a father any around, you are not supposed to afflict that child. Isaiah one and seventeen, learn to do well. Seek judgment, reveal the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. So also in this video, God has breaking down what you're supposed <laughs> pardon me, <coughs> excuse me, what you're supposed to do concerning the widow and the fatherless, and what you're not supposed to do concerning the widow and the fatherless, and the wickedness and the injustice that is being performed against widowers and the fatherless children. All right. So when I say a one in 17, learn to do well, seek judgment, re relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. This is something you're supposed to do. Deuteronomy 24 and 17. Thou shall not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless. People are not supposed to pervert judgment for a stranger, a fatherless, someone, a child who's fatherless, nor take a widow's ragment to pledge. They shall not take a widow's raiment to pledge. These things are judged by God. God is the judge and the, of the fatherless and the widow, and he's the father of the fatherless. So if they cry before God against your injustice, judgment will definitely come down on you. But regardless of that, what he has shown me is judgment. He is so wroth with what is happening to children, fatherless children and widows, that he already laid forth a judgment. And to the people who turn a blind eye to their oppression and justice being served for them and them having their right and getting what belongs to them. And also the injustices that that, that is performed against this, this these groups of people, the fatherless, the orphan and the widow. All right. Um, Deuteronomy 27 and 19. Curse be he that perverts the judgment of a stranger fatherless and widow and all the people shall say amen so you're cursed when you pervert the judgment of a stranger a fatherless child and a widow and all the people shall say amen so god told you in deuteronomy do not pervert the judgment of a stranger or the fatherless nor take a widow's ragment to pledge and then it goes on to say who these who does pervert the judgment of these people they are cursed now this is going to be a long video because the lesson is really long and um, the breakdown of all the things God wants me to teach concerning this matter. I write, Jeremiah 22 and 3, Thus says the Lord, execute judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor and do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow. Neither shed innocent blood in this place. So what are you not supposed to do? Do no wrong 
to the stranger, the fatherless, or the widow. Take out their spoil from the oppressors. Those who stole from them and oppressed them, you got to take that away from them and give it to the fatherless and give it to the widow and the stranger. And don't shed no innocent blood. These are things that God judges. Deuteronomy 10 and 18. He does execute the judgment of the fatherless. So you understand God executes judgment upon people who harm fatherless children and widows. You know someone's child is, doesn't have a father and you're troubling that child and you're oppressing what belongs to that child. That's a judgment of God. You're cursed when you do those things. When you pervert, you turn away their right. When you pervert judgment against them and justice, you don't serve justice for these people. You're cursed and God judges you. He does execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loves the stranger in giving him food and ragment. Now, Malachi 3 and 5, I will come near unto you to judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hearing in his wages, the widow and the fatherless and turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me. So this is what he's telling you. He's coming near to you in this judgment. He's, a, he's going to be a swift witness against you for this thing with the for for what? Let's go down here. He's a he's coming near to you to judgment and will be a swift witness against you for those that oppress the hairling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless. So if you oppress the widow and the fatherless in their wages and you turn away the fatherless and the widow from their right and their rights, what's rightfully belonging to them, what right what's rightfully theirs, and you fear not God. He's, he's coming on to you to judge, coming near to you to judgment. And what he let me know is he's already laid down judgment on such people. Amen. So there you have it. Now, Psalm 68 and 5, a father of the fatherless. So if you think a fatherless child doesn't have a, a father, God makes himself that child's father. And he judges for that child. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows. He judges their cause. He lets you know that from the beginning. He's the father of the father of the fatherless and the judge of the widows. Is God in his holy habitation. That is why you're not supposed to do no wrong to them. Psalms 146 and 9. The Lord preserves the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. So people who do wickedness to the fatherless and widow, what does God do? He turns the way of the wicked upside down. But he preserves the stranger and he relieves the fatherless and the widow. Now, Psalms 10 and 18. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of the earth may no more oppress. Righteous judges, righteous rulers. They're supposed to judge the cause of the fatherless and the oppressed that that the man of the earth may no more oppress the fatherless and oppress the, the oppressed. Now, listen to Job. This is what God wants me to read about Job. We're going to get into the book of doctrine and covenants as well. I told you this is going to be a long lesson because of the information that we're going to get down to the injustices and wickedness that are taking place against the widow and the fatherless, why God has let go judgments. Psalm, I mean, Job chapter 31, verse 17 to 28. This is what Job says. What then shall I do when God rises up? And when he visits, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? So did not... God make you in the womb as you see another? Did not one fashion us in the womb? If I have withheld from the poor, from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel my, myself alone, and the fatherless has not eaten thereof, 
for from my youth he was brought up with me as with a father and I have guided her from my mother's womb if I have seen any perish for want of clothing or any poor without covering if his loins have not blessed me and if he were not warmed with the fleece of my sheep if I have lifted up my hands against the fatherless when I saw my help in the gate then let my arm fall from my shoulder blade you hear what Job said if he didn't help the fatherless if he lifted up his hand against the fatherless if he didn't clothe them if he didn't give to them if he hasn't guided them up as like he was their father in the right way is what he's saying if he never did these good stuff onto them if he went he made the widow go without he made the poor go without their desires and the eyes of the widow to fail if he eat by himself and never gave the fatherless what is he saying he said let let then his arm fall from his shoulder blade and his arm be broken from the bone for destruction from god was a terror to me and by reason of his highness i could not endure if i have made gold my hope then he says if i've made gold my hope or i've said to find gold thou art my confidence if i have rejoiced because my wealth was great and because my hand had gotten me much if i beheld the sun when it shined or the moon walking in brightness and my heart has been secretly enticed or my mouth has kissed my hand this also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge for i should have denied the God that is above. So if you do those stuff that Job is saying, did he do these stuff to the poor? Did he do these stuff to the fatherless? Did they he make them go without their desires, their clothing, their provisions, basically helping them, being a father to them, relieving them? He said, this is, a, this is an iniquity to be punished by the judge. Now, why does Job say about he made them if he went with eating without the fatherless eating? Because of God's word concerning widows and fatherless. Deuteronomy 24 and 19. When thou cuts down thy harvest in thy field and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. The Lord thy God, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the works of thy hands. You must give to the fatherless, the stranger and the widow, so God can bless you in all the works of your hands. And, the, and this, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 16 and 14, And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter, and thy manservant and thy maidservant, and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. You're supposed to give to them. You're not supposed to blind, turn a blind eye and you're supposed to execute justice serve for them. Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 83, verse 1. Verily, thus says the Lord, in addition to the laws of the church concerning women and children, those who belong to the church who have lost their husbands or fathers, women have claim on their husband for their maintenance until their husbands are taken. Now, this is what he wants me to talk about this, all right? If they lost their husbands or fathers, women have claim on their husband for their maintenance until their husbands are taken. Women, men are supposed to maintain and take care of their wives. That is a duty from God and their children. They're supposed to take care of their, wife, their woman's maintenance not any woman the woman that god made for them their ordained spouse the and their ordained children did abraham take care of um some other woman or he took care of sarah the one the woman god gave him that woman who god gave you you you're supposed as a husband you're supposed to take care of her maintenance until the day you die that's why he said six days thou shall work and on the seventh day you shall rest the sabbath and concerning women and children who lost their husbands or fathers let's read this again 
But because people would think that it's talking about any woman. No, the woman God made for you. He told you to cast out that strange woman and her son. You, you have to take care of the woman God gave you. That's a duty as a man. Verily, thus says the Lord, in addition to the laws of the church concerning women and children, those who belong to the church who have lost their husbands or fathers, women have claim on their husbands for their maintenance. So if these, these women and children lost their husbands or fathers, women have claim on their husbands for their maintenance until their husbands are taken. And if they are not found transgressors, so if these women are not found to be transgressors, they shall have fellowship in the church. And if they are not faithful, they shall not have fellowship in the church. So if these women lost their husbands or their fathers, and these, but they're transgressors, they shall have no fellow, fellowship in the church. If they are not faithful, they shall have they shall not have fellowship in the church yet they shall remain upon their inheritances according to the laws of the land so they shall still have their inheritances that belongs to them their maintenance from their husbands and the church helping them for their fatherless children they still have their inheritance all children have claim upon their parents for their maintenance until they are of age so men and men are not supposed to not take care of their children women are not only left with the responsibility of taking care of the child parents both male and female both mother and father both mom and dad ha must maintain maintain the maintenance of their children until your children are of age this is not a single mother's job this is not a single father's job unless they are father they're widowed but if that dad is living and that mother is living they are supposed to take maintenance and taking care of their child until their children are of age You leave your mother's house and you cleave to your wife till they're of age and they get out of your house and they're with their husband and their wife. You are supposed to take maintenance of your child, men and women. Men are not supposed to not take care of their child and they're not supposed to not take care of their wife. And after that, they have claim upon the church or in other words, upon the Lord's storehouse. So... The fatherless children and the widows have claim upon the church and God's storehouse if their parents have not wherewith, wherewith to give them inheritance and if their parents are poor. Say you have children and you don't you can't maintain them and you're poor. Those children, those parents have claim from the church, God's storehouse in the church, what's given to the church. You know how they have offerings and they're given out. That is for who? The widow, the fatherless, and the poor and the needy, they don't have. It's not for your pastor to pocket. It's for a people who need it. And after that, they have claim upon the church, or in other words, upon the Lord's storehouse, if their parents have not wherewith to give them inheritances. And the storehouse shall be kept by the consecrations of the church, and widows and orphans shall be provided for as also the poor. Amen. So these things are supposed to be taken care Who's supposed to take care of the fatherless, the widow, the orphans, and the poor? The church. And who's supposed to make sure that they're provided for and that judgment is being served for them? The judge. The law of the land the justice system book of Pro mormon chapter 8 verse 39 why do you why do you adore yourself with that which has no life and yet yet suffer the hunger yet suffer the hungry and the needy and the naked and the sick and the afflicted to pass by you and notice them not yeah why do you build up your secret abominations to get gain 
and cause that widows should mourn before the Lord, and also orphans to mourn before the Lord, and also the blood of their fathers and their husbands to cry unto the Lord from the ground, because they're fatherless and their widows. So their husbands and, and their fathers are crying from the ground because you're not taking care of their children, and their wives are crying to God, and those men who died are crying to God. And also the blood of their fathers and their husbands to cry unto the Lord from the ground for vengeance upon your necks. So those widowers and those fatherless children, their fathers and their husbands cry out to God against you for what you do to their children. They cry out for vengeance on your head. Behold, the sword of vengeance hangs over you and the time soon comes that he avenges the blood of the saints upon you. For he will not suffer their cries any longer. Amen. Zechariah 7 and 9. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion, every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your hearts. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 100 and chapter 123, verse 1. And again, we shall, we would suggest for your consideration the propriety of all the saints gathering up a knowledge of all the facts and sufferings and abuses put upon them by the people of this state, people of the land, people of the country who are doing these injustices and corruptions and wickedness against the fatherless, the widow, the needy, the poor. So it says... And again, we would suggest for your consideration the propriety of all the saints gathering up a knowledge of all the facts and sufferings and abuses put upon them by the people of this state and also of all the property and amount of damages which they have sustained, both of character and personal injuries, as well as real property. And also the names of all the persons that have had a hand in their oppressions as far as they can get hold of them and find them out. So what does it say? Also of all the property and amount of damages which they have sustained, both of character and personal injuries, as well as real property that people have stole, that people have oppressed them for. And also the names of all the persons that have had a hand in their oppressions, as far as they can get hold of them and find them out. And this is what's supposed to be done against people who come against these, the orphans, the widows, the fatherless, the poor, and the needy. And perhaps a committee can be appointed to find out these things and to take statements and affidavits and also to gather up the libelous publications that are afloat and all that are in the magazines and in the encyclopedias and the libelous histories that are published and are writing and by whom and present the whole cons concatenation uh, sorry concatenation of diabolical rascality and nefarious and murderous impositions that have been practiced upon these people so the whole concatenation of diabolical rascality and nefarious and murderous impositions that have been practiced upon these people that we may not only publish to all the world but present them to the heads of government in all their dark and hellish hue as the last offer which is jo enjoyed on us by our heavenly father before we can fully and completely claim that promise which shall call him forth from his hiding place and also that the whole nation may be left without excuse before he can send forth the power of his mighty arm. It is imperative duty that we owe to God to angels with whom we shall be brought to stand and also to ourselves, to our wives and children who have been made to bow down with grief, sorrow and care under the most damning hand of murder, tyranny and oppression supported and urged on and upheld by the influences of that spirit which has so strongly revited the creeds of the fathers 
who have inherited lies upon the hearts of the children and filled the world with confusion and has brought and has been growing stronger and stronger and is now the very mainspring of all corruption and the whole earth groans under the weight of its iniquity it is an iron yoke it is a strong band they are they are handcuffs and chains and shackles and fetters of hell therefore it is an imperative duty that we owe not to our only to our only to our own wives and children but to the widows and fatherless whose husbands and fathers have been murdered under its iron hand which dark and blackening deeds are enough to make hell itself shudder and to stand against and pale and the hands of the very devil to tremble and palsy and also it is a imperative duty that we owe to all the rising generation and to all the pure in heart for there are many yet on the earth among all sects parties and denominations who are blinded by the subtle craftiness of men whereby they lie in wait to deceive who are only kept from the truth because they know not where to find it therefore that we should waste and wear out our lives in bringing to light all the hidden things of darkness wherewith we know them and they are truly manifest from heaven these should then be attended to with great earnestness let no man count them as small things for there is much with which lies in fruitarity fruitarity pertaining to the saints which depends upon these things you know brethren that a very large ship is benefited very much by a very small helm helm in the time of a storm by keeping by being kept work ways with the wind and the waves therefore dearly beloved brethren let us cheerfully do all things that lie in our power and then may we stand still with the utmost assurance to see the salvation of god and for his arm to be revealed so what are you supposed to do for widows and fatherless you're supposed to even gather up all the information and the injustices that you know have been happened to these people the amount of damages that have been done to them their personal injuries as well as their property execute judgment serve for them justice serve for them gather up all the people that you know who was oppressing them and bring them before the government bring, bring them before the law of the land testify against them jeremiah 49 and 11 leave thy fatherless children i will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me we're going to get to the wickedness that they do to them and why it's under judgment so it told you all the things people are supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do and the things that people are doing that they're not we're almost there doctrine and covenants chapter 36 verse 8 let each company bear an equal pro 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 proportion I said, let each company bear an equal proportion according to the divin dividend of their property in taking the poor, the needies, the fatherless, and the families of those who have gone into the army, that the cries of the widow and the fatherless come not up into the ears of the Lord against this people. Let each company prepare houses and fields for raising grain. For who? For raising grain for who? For the widows, the fatherless, and the poor. For those who are to remain behind this season, and this is the will of the Lord concerning his people. Let every man use all his influence and property to remove this people to a place where the Lord shall locate a stake of Zion. And if you do this with a pure heart and all faithfulness, you shall be blessed. You shall be blessed in your flocks and in your herds and in your fields and in your houses and in your families. Didn't God tell you if you do what's good and right and just to the fatherless and the widow that he'll bless the all the works of your hands if you give to them? And not only will he bless you, what did he tell you he'll do to you? He'll, he told you he'll bless your flocks, he'll bless your herds, he'll bless your field, he'll bless your houses, and he'll bless your families. 
If you execute righteous judgment for the fatherless, the widow, and the poor, and the needy, and the oppressed, God will bless the work of your hands, which is in Deuteronomy. Then he goes on to tell you again in, in Doctrine and Covenants that he'll not only bless the work of your hands, like he says in Deuteronomy, but your flocks, your herd, your fields, your houses, and your family. Your family will be blessed. Now, the injustices and wickedness done against the orphan, fatherless and widow, these are the crimes. These are the stuff that are being done. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 2. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. So God's saying, they make widows their prey. They pray upon the widows and they rob the fatherless. Job 24 and 3. They drive away the ass of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox for a pledge. They steal. They take away what belongs to them. Now, this is what they do. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 28. They are waxing fat. They shine, yeah? They overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. They don't execute righteous judgment and justice for the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy, do they not judge? They don't judge the righteous cause of the fatherless and the poor and the needy. And they steal from the fatherless and the widow. Job chapter 24 verse 9. They pluck up, pluck the fatherless from the breasts and take a pledge of the poor. They take pledge against the widow. They take pledge against the poor. Not to help them. Not to execute righteous judgment for them. They take away people's children from them. They pluck the fatherless from the breasts and take a pledge of the poor. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 7. In thee have they set light. In thee have they set light by father and mother. In the midst of thee have they dealt by oppression with the stranger. In thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widow. They vex the fatherless and the widow. Not giving them what's rightfully theirs. <clears throat> not giving them what's rightfully theirs. Pardon me. And not executing righteous judgment for them. And not helping them. What they know that they're in need of. They know they're in need of. And, and what is happening to those fatherless children? And widows, husbands, and wife. They're crying from the ground. Vengeance against those people who's withholding what's theirs. Opp oppressing them and not executing righteous judgment and justice being served for them. Their, their father, th those husbands and those fathers are crying out to God. Vengeance on people, those people doing these things head. Psalms chapter 94 verse 6. They slay the widow. What did they do? They slay widows and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Job chapter 6 verse 27. Yeah, you overwhelm the fatherless and you dig a pit for your friend. They overwhelm the fatherless and they dig a pit for your friend. You even have people who know that their friends are fatherless and they're digging pits for them. And he says people overall, the wicked, they overwhelm the fatherless. Now Isaiah chapter 1 verse 23. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. They steal from the widow and the fatherless. Everyone loves gifts and follows after rewards. They take rewards and pledges against the fatherless and the widow and the poor and the needy. They judge not the fatherless, neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. Job chapter 22, verse 9. Thou hast sent widows away empty. They don't give unto the widow what they're supposed to and require to give them by God. They don't give unto the fatherless, the poor and the needy, what they're required and required to do by God. 
a, they're not supposed to send away a widow or a fatherless child empty. That this is what they do. Thou has sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken. They don't give what is rightfully theirs. Psalms chapter 10 verse 18 to judge the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of the earth may no more oppress the judge and the law of the land and the government are supposed to judge for the fatherless and the oppressed that people in the earth shall no more oppress them now Psalms chapter Psalms chapter 82 verse 3 defend the poor and fatherless do justice to the afflicted and needy these people are supposed to judges justice system your government are supposed to make sure they execute righteous judge justice and what is right and what's fair concerning the poor the needy the afflicted the fatherless and the widow they're not supposed to take a bribe they're not supposed to do any form of injustice or corruption against these people not the poor not the needy, not the afflicted, not the stranger, not a fatherless child. Everything done right and righteously. And this is the lesson, and this is the teaching from God and the word of God, saying that he's judging these injustices that have gone out against, that people are doing with oppressing and causing personal injuries and stealing real properties from from the poor, the needy, the widow, the fatherless, and not giving them what is rightfully theirs, executing righteous judgment and justice. And that is what God wants people to do. Remember, that is what a king and a queen is supposed to do, execute righteous judgment and justice for all. Because this God is judging the people who have been taking bribes, perverting judgment, perverting judgment against the fatherless, the poor, the needy, and the widows. But this is mainly concerning he, judgments gone out on those who do these things to the widow and the fatherless. Because he's the father of the fatherless and the judge of the widows. It's God in his holy habitation. And he tells you in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, Judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor the fatherless, nor take a widow's ragment to pledge. You're not supposed to take vows and pledges against fatherless, the fatherless and the widow. And if you do these things, you pervert judgment against them. You're cursed. And God will execute judgment against you. But he tells you how to operate concerning these people. Thus says the Lord God, execute judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor. And do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow. Neither shed innocent blood in this place. And then he goes on to say, what if you, if you know these things are being done to such people? That... You have to record them, bring them up to the government for their injustices, write up all they did, all that, all the facts of what they suffered, their sufferings, their abuses that was put on them and their oppressions, their injuries. And that statement should be made in affidavits, gathered up and published and brought to be testified against such people doing these crimes. But not only that, they have to be dealt, they're being dealt with by God for these crimes. And beautiful people, um, you can ask God about this message. Stay blessed. And oh, um, I seen the, someone ask how they can reach me. Um, my email is scienceprincess7 at gmail.com. So I'll say it again it's scienceprincess7 at gmail.com. Stay blessed, beautiful people.